Hello again. Let's move on to the second major topic of this course, extracting data from the internet. We will be looking at three useful web scraping packages, the first being Beautiful Soup. Since the next few sections discuss some aspect of web scraping, this video will discuss basic concepts of web scraping. Next, we talk about web scraping safety. This means safety particularly for the website that you are scraping, which translates to safety for yourself. After the true introductory videos, we talk about an easy to use package for web scraping Beautiful Soup, the package of focus in this section. We see how to fetch a web page and how to use Beautiful Soup to parse it. We wrap up the section with extracting useful data from the web page of interest. Let's get started talking about web scraping. In this video, I explain basic ideas of web scraping. I discuss what web scraping is for and how to understand internet data's structure. Let's start by discussing what web scraping is. Web scraping is reading internet documents such as web pages and extracting data from them. Web scraping is used when the data we want is not presented in a format such as a CSV file or database, but instead is intended for human consumption. Often the data is an HTML document that a web browser will render for human readers, or it may have been generated by JavaScript code. Web scraping is a last resort for getting data from the internet. It's meant for messy data. Getting data from an API or downloading and reading a CSV file is not commonly considered web scraping. If data could be obtained that way, we would not be web scraping, since web scraping is more difficult than other means of extracting data. But the data we get from web scraping could be quite rich. Web pages are understood and structured using what's known as the document object model, often referred to as the DOM. This is a tree-like structure describing HTML, specifically XML in general. A root node, in this case the HTML node, is present and all contexts exist below this node. Nodes in a DOM contain subnodes, all of which give structure to the document. The object contained in the document include paragraphs, headers, links, lists, elements in tables, and so on. They have attributes attached to them along with content, any of which can contain the data that we want. No two web pages are the same, and often in web scraping, scripts have to be written for specific web pages. So a look at the DOM of web pages of interest is the first step in a web scraping project. This is a list of tags to use to organize a document's content. Of these, divs and spans are arguably of greater interest to web scrapers. These tags often organize the content of the document and getting precisely the element we want often involves drilling down through several divs. This list contains HTML tags that web scrapers are usually interested in as these often contain the data we want to extract. Tags can contain content between them and also content in their attributes. Just about any of these could be useful. Tables have a more complex structure and tables are not used exclusively for storing data. They're also used to organize the presentation of content in a web page. CSS is a language used for controlling the rendering of elements in a web page. Why would a web scraper care about how elements are rendered? The answer is simple. CSS leads to web page elements being differentiated, making it easier for a web scraper to drill down and find the content desired. In particular, CSS encourages tags to be separated into class and IDs that web scrapers find handy, ranging from singular elements to whole divs. Perhaps the two most important attributes of HTML elements in general are class and ID, which CSS uses extensively and web scrapers subsequently exploit. Any HTML object can have more than one class or ID, or none at all. If multiple IDs or classes apply to an object, they are separated by hyphens. The difference between classes and IDs are that only one object in a document can have a particular ID, while multiple objects can belong to the same class. Here's an example. The div mentioned in the slide belongs to two classes. One is the class globe, the other the class zen, enclosed in quotes and separated by a hyphen. It only has one ID, though the ID map. There is no general web scraper that will get you any datum you want only if you ask it nicely. Web scrapers must be designed for a particular application, such as a particular website and to collect a particular data set. This means that you will need to explore a website before you scrape it. Use the developer tools provided with Firefox or Chrome to see the DOM of a web page. Dig through the document's DOM to find the data you need. 
Along the way, pay attention to class or IDs of divs, spans, or even the elements itself that you could use to quickly grab the element that you want. A web scraper that uses classes and IDs extensively will be more robust than a web scraper that depends on the position of objects in the DOM. You want your scraper to be as simple as possible. This will make it more robust should this page author suddenly make a change that would otherwise break your scraper. You should watch out for dynamically generated content, such as that created by JavaScript. If the data you need is generated dynamically, you may need to use different tools. Beautiful Soup would be inappropriate for such content, and you may want to turn to Selenium instead. Here I have the Chrome browser, and I'm looking at a web page that we will be scraping in not too long. I'm looking at a list of Nobel laureates. We look through this web page, and down here we have a table of Nobel laureates starting from the year 1901. So I would like to be able to scrape this web page. And the first step I'm going to do in my project is look at the developer tools that are provided by Chrome. If you're using Firefox, you also have access to developer tools that work very similarly to the Chrome tool. When I open up the developer tools, I actually get a view of the DOM. So I can actually look through and see the structure of this document. So as I bring my mouse through the DOM, elements of the page are highlighted. That's suggesting that certain elements are belonging to certain elements that my mouse is hovering over in the DOM. If I were to click an arrow right here, I see some of the sub-elements of this DOM. And you again see elements being highlighted as they correspond to what's in the web page. And I can dig down deeper and deeper. For example, right here is the element for the first heading. Notice that it has an ID associated with it and a class. And this information would be useful if we were designing a web scraper that wanted to get just the titles of web pages. And we could also get the text of the web page as that's enclosed within the tags. And I can dig down deeper and deeper through divs by clicking on these arrows to have a look at what's in this. And these elements could potentially be scraped by a web scraper such as Beautiful Soup. Now, here is a handy tip that I like to use. And Firefox has a function like this. I can click on this Select Element in the Page to Inspect It tool. So this will make my mouse hot, and I can hover over elements and see where they are located in the DOM. So I can, for example, click on this image. Maybe this image is of interest to me. And I can see here is the image. Here is the source of the image. Here's its width. Here's its height. There's all sorts of interesting data associated with this. And I can also see some of the parents. So if I wanted to drill down through the DOM to select this image, this would suggest a strategy for me to take. Now let's scroll through this. This table is going to be of the greatest interest to us later on. So if I wanted to know more about this table, I click on this tool again, and I can actually see a lot more information about this table. So I see that, for example, I have links here that will be linked to pages that I'm going to want to visit with my web scraper in order to get the data that I want. And I can see some of the parent nodes and maybe children nodes. All of this could be very helpful when trying to scrape this web page. So this would be the first step that I'm going to do. It's going to suggest what I need to put in my scraper in order to get what I need. That's all for now.